This is Author Conversations, the Stenhouse Publishers podcast. In his book, Leading and Learning, Fred Brill draws on personal narratives from new and experienced school administrators to examine common themes, concerns, successes, and failures, and shows how the power of combining professional learning communities with the practice of reflective storytelling results in better school leadership and professional growth. In today's podcast, Fred describes some of the unique challenges school leaders face and how reflective storytelling differs from traditional models of professional development. So the seeds of this book, Leading and Learning, uh, began to sprout in the fertile grounds, the dirt is what I like to call it, of my personal experience as a school leader. I served as an assistant principal for three years and then as a middle school principal for nine years. In reflecting on my own development as I struggled to learn the craft of educational leadership, I came to a very simple conclusion. It followed nothing less than a wild, erratic growth pattern characterized by fits, sputters, stops, and periodic spurts of learning and development. I didn't have a professional learning community to provide the necessary support or structured opportunities that might have prompted me to reflect on and integrate my new experiences. I didn't have the language or conceptual frameworks that would have allowed me to formulate a theoretical construct to inform my work as an instructional leader. I had no idea how other school administrators talked about their work, how they made decisions, how they chose which roles to play, or how they navigated the intense emotion that seemed to erupt whenever any attempts were made to change any type of school practice. As a practitioner, Rarely was I interested, and nor did I have time to read academic journals. Those scholarly books and articles seemed abstract, wordy, and not overly useful for refining or reforming my everyday practice. However, I did recognize that thoughtful researchers had gone into the field to study and learn and share their findings. I knew there was so much to learn from researchers, but this isn't how I knew I learned about my work. What I did know was that as a new school principal, I was in desperate need of more information about the art and science of school leadership. I needed to do more than simply tell war stories to anyone who was willing to listen. I needed a means of framing the challenges that I was confronting on a daily basis. I needed guidance on how to develop an effective decision-making process. And most of all, I longed for a professional learning community that would prompt me to reflect on my practice in a supportive and structured manner. One of the themes that runs throughout my book is the notion of the school leader as a superhero. And uh, it is true that school leaders are expected to be all things to all people at all time and serve uh, all the different constituents and handle all the different rough problems that come up on a daily basis. The irony is when new school leaders are coming from a credentialing program, they're expected to burst forth from the cloistered phone booth of an administrative program, take to the air and effectively meet the needs of all students, teachers, parents, and of course the higher level administrators. Unfortunately, leadership development programs are not generally structured or organized in such a way that prospective leaders are prepared to address the challenges that they're going to face, the different roles they're expected to play in the school setting. Classroom learning for professional tends to be inclined towards the theoretical rather than the practical, and that's a problem. We know that adult learning theory is based on the premise that we need to be learning from our own experiences. And we need to be learning with colleagues, not in isolation, but in a professional learning community where we can make meaning together as interested as interested and supportive colleagues. One of the questions that I'm frequently asked is, why would I use stories as a focal point for professional development for new school leaders? And what is the appropriate place for storytelling, of storytelling, in in how adults make meaning of their work. And I, I have to acknowledge that the use of storytelling as a form of adult learning is a profound shift in the way that school leaders traditionally have engaged in professional development. 
It's not unusual for a professional developer to allow participants a few minutes to check in with table partners at the start of a meeting, maybe do a little ice-breaking activity, but this is often where storytelling ends. In the traditional model, a professional developer or professor dictates to his students a particular subject or competency to be mastered. It's assumed that professional growth will come in the form of neatly packaged research studies, prescribed competencies, and learning modules harvested from academic literature. And sadly, this is similar to the way that many school reforms and curricular shifts have been handed down from central office and from state and federal educrats. And we all know how successful a lot of those top-down initiatives work. The sad thing is that storytelling often is seen as a frivolous or unproductive activity. The act of sharing not only facilitates connection and caring among colleagues, but it does promote a process of sense-making and reconceptualization of practice. Storytelling without reflection can present as a form of entertainment, but reflective storytelling can serve as a springboard for professional development. And what I do know is that growth-oriented leaders relish the opportunity to contemplate their craft and thoughtfully consider the many decisions that they are in the process of making without performing under the all-too-bright lights of school leadership. Admittedly, stories are so elusive, fleeting, and ethereal. In addition, it sometimes seems as though new leaders cannot be trusted to construct their own knowledge. Way back in 1938, John Dewey exposed the vital connection between experience and learning. The use of storytelling requires a trust that professionals working in teams can and will grab hold of opportunities to tease out a deeper understanding of the ways in which their words and actions may have been received and perceived. The passion for story presents as a primordial need and does not disappear when we slip into the costume of the professional. Human beings have an innate desire to learn with and from others, to be inspired and to share. When asked if participating in such reflective activities was of value, one new elementary school principal explained, it's the loneliest job in the world, and it seemed like you guys are the only ones who understand my stories and help me understand. Of course I'm going to keep coming. Leading and Learning Effective school leadership through reflective storytelling and inquiry is available now at www.stenhouse.com and your Stenhouse distributor. Thanks for listening.